Hello, welcome to this short presentation on CFA. My name is Simon Hollihan. I'm the head of CFA here at Fitch Learning. And the purpose of today is just to give you a, an overview of the exam, the, the potential traps that you may fall into, and, and obviously how we can help you uh, overcome those. Before we start, I just want to look at this sort of strap line we have here on the slide. And I think it's a really important uh, few uh, words there. I mean, the key word in particular is the word commit. Because in a way, what I want to try and do today is to almost put you off CFA. Because I really don't want you to waste your time doing CFA without committing to it. You need that commitment. It's a lot of effort, a lot of hours of, your, of life. And I want you to really embrace it and enjoy CFA. You know, it's a really rewarding uh, qualification. Once you've gone through the three levels and you look back, uh, certainly I was really proud at everything I'd learned along the way. So please, it's really important that you take away the commitment you need to get through CFA. Obviously, me and my team can absolutely help you uh, and, and maximize your chance of passing, but it does take a commitment from you. So, so that strap line is a really important strap line, that if you were to commit to CFA, then absolutely we will commit to helping you get through there, but it does take a commitment. Anyway, before we get started in the detail of the product, a quick chat about the CFA charter. I'm sure many of you are aware of that, but just a few a few key points. Um, obviously, it's a professional qualification, so it's not it's not academic. It's you know the the curriculum is set by practitioners and charter holders. It changes each year. It changes as as markets and products change, as regulations change, uh, and it's very much a a practitioner led curriculum. Therefore, it does mean it should be relevant. Maybe not all of it is relevant, but big chunks of it should be relevant for pretty much anyone who works in the industry. Um, why take the charter? Well, it's probably the only global qualification in this space. Yeah, truly global. Anywhere in the world, they'll recognize the designation CFA. It has, as I'm sure you are aware, a very strong focus on uh, ethics, which increasingly becomes an important part in the post Lehman's world, uh, where clients expect higher standards. Uh, obviously, you're going to have the knowledge I spoke about, which will help you. Uh, and also, there's a, a global passport. What we mean by that is uh, many, many regulators around the world will uh, allow you certain waivers from certain, um, often local qualifications. You know, a lot of regulators around the world require that you are competent in your area. And how do you measure competence? Well, this is often used. So there's lots and lots of regulators that will recognize CFA. So for years and uh, years, certainly ever since I've been doing this, CFA has been known as the gold standard. And I think that really reflects the integrity of the qualification, the fact you can rely on its value. Uh, and what that means to an employer is it doesn't really matter when you take CFA. You know, a charter holder who ob obtained it in the 1980s, I can assure you, would have worked just as hard as, as anyone getting the 90s or the noughties or further, further on. Okay, the curriculum changes, but you'll still have to demonstrate a rigorous uh, understanding of the, of the curriculum and demonstrate certain core skills. So it, the gold standard, I think, is a fantastic phrase for it. Okay, before we go further, I think I alluded to in my introduction, uh, the work hours, etc. you have to find. Uh, because you really have to go into this with your eyes open. If you think CFA is going to be easy, I'm afraid you're in for a, a big shock. Uh, when I came into uh, doing CFA many years ago, uh, I came uh, from background as being an economist. And so obviously there were chunks of level one which I was really uh, comfortable with. Uh, obviously economics, uh, the quants, and the fixed income. So I'd say around about a third of the curriculum, I would have rated myself as being uh, very, very comfortable with. Um, and looking back, uh, did I spend 300 hours on level one? Uh, Probably not, uh, probably nearer 200 if I'm brutally honest. But if I think back to level two, whoa, I did well north of 300. I probably did nearer 380, maybe even 400 hours. So I think when I look back over my three uh, levels, 300-ish hours is a pretty good average for the three levels. Okay, give or take a variance of you know, you know, 20 or 30 hours either side, but I think starting at where you are now, I would budget for about 300 hours. So 
That then creates a problem for you, is, is when are you going to find this time? You know, we're all very busy. You know, we've all got work that often involves long hours, and quite a few of us don't take enough holiday as it is. So we've got to think very carefully how to find that time. So I'll talk a bit later on about how we can help you um, structure your, your time and to make the most of it. But that 300 hours, it's not uh, a empty kind of guidance, not an empty threat. It is pretty genuine. So uh, please, you know, ask the question, can you find close to 300 hours, okay? Um, also, the topic areas. Again, CFA is a professional generalist qualification. It doesn't teach you to be an expert in any one area but it gives you a very, very broad range of knowledge. So if you look at the uh, content we have here, um, all three levels, pretty broad. They have very similar topics. Okay, slightly different weightings, but pretty similar topics. Um, ethics is running throughout all three. Uh, the exam format slightly changes as you go through the levels. So for level one, it's just pure, simple, multiple choice. You know, simple, I say simple, but sta standalone questions. Okay? You could do the paper in any order, quite literally. Level two is multiple choice, but crucially, it, they are designed around a case study. Uh, and so there, you, it's much more of a story. You have to analyze more data and then answer questions based on, on your analysis. Uh, level three has half of it is as per level two, and the other half, the morning part, is the dreaded essay paper. We say essay paper, it's, it's not a traditional essay. Uh, it's more uh, written response, bullet points, paragraphs, that kind of stuff. But I can tell you now, that's the hard part. But we'll come on to that a bit later on, maybe in a few years' time. Um, so it's a very broad curriculum. It's a very interesting curriculum. Uh, it will help you cover the gaps in your knowledge. And I'm sure you have gaps. Uh, I certainly did before I did CFA. My big uh, black hole in my knowledge was accounting. You know, I was an economist, as I said beforehand. I knew very little about accounts. So having done uh, CFA, as you can see here, levels one and two have a pretty uh, decent weighting uh, for accounts, for financial report analysis. So by the time you've gone through CFA, okay, I'm not saying you're going to be an accountant, but you should have a pretty good knowledge uh, of accounts. So that was my motivation very much to do that. And there's a few other areas I didn't know. You know, I was reasonably competent on derivatives, but I must say, having come from a, a more sell-side background, the whole area of portfolio management was a bit new to me. So that I found that very interesting, very interesting. Level three I found really interesting, where you start to apply your knowledge in the context of a, of a client portfolio. So, you know, the curriculum is broad enough, I think, to keep everyone interested. There'll be bits that you like, bits you don't like. But as a, as a whole, it's a really, really well thought out uh, curriculum. Now, pass rates. <laughs> um, doesn't make good reading, does it? Uh, level one, two, and three for uh, uh, last sitting. Um, the level one, level two pass rates are pretty similar to where they have been the last few years. So level one is normally around the sort of the uh, 40, 41%, uh, with maybe a couple of percent variance uh, either side. Um, level two, again, is normally around the mid 40s with a a couple of percentage uh, variation either side. Um, level three is the one that has been coming down, if I'm honest, uh, over the last uh, 10 years. So when I did uh, level three, we're talking a long time ago now, so when the dinosaurs were still walking the earth, um, I think the global pass rate then was near 80 percent. It's come right down to 54. And I, I honestly think that is just because the CFA has become more uh, international. So when I did CFA, it was very much a North American and Western Europe qualification. So the vast majority of people taking it had English as their first language. Uh, over the last uh, 10 or 20 years, it's become more international, and we're seeing more people do this without the, uh, the same level of language skills. And I think, therefore, that's the issue. The morning paper, the, the written paper, is really, really time pressured, even if English is your first language. Uh, so if it's not, uh, I can uh, fully understand why people struggle with level three. Um, now, Fitch Learnings pass rates, as you can see here on the slide, I'd love to tell you what they are, but I'm afraid I'm not allowed to. You know, we are one of a, a handful of the, of the globally uh, approved PrEP providers, uh, which means uh, we have certain rights 
and certain responsibilities. So we have certain kind of benefits of being a approved provider. We have certain uh, access to the Institute. Uh, we have a regular dialogue with them. But then we have certain responsibilities, and that includes not uh, divulging our pass rates. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, we can't do that. Right? But these are global pass rates uh, for the three settings. Right? Now, they are low. Um, some of the reasons we kind of touched on already, that ultimately it's very hard to find 250 to 300 hours when you're already working maybe a 50, 60, 70 hour week. Um, it, is, it is tough, and, it, and that's why I guess it's so well respected as a qualification. Um, so we had a little think here at Fitch Learning to try and break it down as to why the pass rates are so low, and these are come of some of our initial thoughts. So I guess, you know, the structure, the planning of your workload is key. So starting too late. And really, this is, this is a, a function of, of how many hours you think you're going to have available in a week. So before you commit to CFA, you know, have a good think about what is your, your workload like, you know, what's your routine. You know, do you have spare time in the morning or, or perhaps you, you're at work by 6 in the morning and you can't do anything there. Uh, do you have any time in the evenings? What about the weekends? You need to have a plan of action, have a strategy. So when I did um, CFA, I found that uh, evening work simply wasn't an option. I was often getting home at sort of 10 o'clock at night, and I simply was not motivated uh, to do anything other than have a glass of wine. Uh, and so I, ha I had to do it for the weekend. And so that was my plan, just to work at the weekends. I'd get up fairly early and do about five to six hours every Saturday, every Sunday. I couldn't really do much more than that because, if I'm honest, uh, I was a dad, I still am a dad, and uh, therefore, you know, it's not fair on the children. They, you know, they were too young to understand. So I had to stop at some point and do all the regular dad things. Um, but I, that meant I could do about 12 hours in a week. So once I've worked out it's about 12 hours a week, then it's a very simple case of doing the math and working back from the exam date and saying, okay, well, when do I have to start? So I'd urge you to sit down and realistically plan out how many hours uh, you can do. And think about uh, what works for you in terms of those hours, and then think about a start date. Okay, and I think a lot of people don't do that discussion until it's too late. Uh, yeah, they they do nothing until right into the new year, and they're really just starting their preparation too late. And when they start doing the math and thinking, okay, how many hours do I have to do a week? They end up realizing they simply cannot find that time. So please have a an honest analysis about what you can and cannot do. Um, because really it's very hard to do CFA uh, by cutting too many corners. You can cut some corners and absolutely will help you cut some corners, but you can't cut too many corners. So, so have a real think about that, that work life um, and, and where you're going to find that work. Um, working uh, inefficiently, it, we all do that. Um, what generally happens is as, uh, uh, students all over the world do this, not just CFA, but they tend to gravitate to areas that they, they like. And they tend to spend too long on areas they're comfortable with. Because there's a kind of certain, I guess, you know, warm glow you get from doing a question and getting it right. Uh, and we don't like to get questions wrong. And so we often end up avoiding areas that we don't really understand. Now, our platform, Cognition, will really come to help you here. Because we'll talk a bit later on, but it's a very clever, intelligent system that will build up a profile of you and all the things you're good at and all the things you're bad at. And basically it will stop you doing this kind of comfort revision. It will stop you uh, just focusing on your strong areas. So it will give you a sample of, of questions, yeah? maybe 10 questions where you're doing a, on a present value using continuous compounding. And if you get 10 right, it will say, fine, you've got that nailed. There's no point wasting any more time on that same area. Let's move on to a different area. And it will draw in other questions, questions that perhaps you haven't answered correctly. So it'll, it'll actually do this for you. It will stop you spending far too long on your, your strong areas. Um, lack of structure, we kind of alluded to. You know, think about the timings, think about the weeks, when to start. Um, again, I'll talk a bit more when we come onto cognition there. Um, we mentioned about focusing on the, the wrong areas. Um, insufficient question practice. Level one is a an area where you probably uh, can get through it by just doing tons of questions. 
And I mean that because you don't have to know any one area to any, any great detail. You have to know a little bit about lots of stuff. But you don't have to drill down at all. Um, that will change as you go through levels uh, two and three. But for level one, it's reasonably superficial. So lots and lots of question practice. Uh, ideally, under exam conditions. Well, I mean under timed conditions. Yeah, so one and a half minutes per question. Now again, we can help you here. Um, we've got thousands, literally thousands of questions. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment when I uh, talk you through our cognition platform. So I guess the key things uh, we take away there is you have to have a proper study plan. You have to really think about the, the timings, think about how many hours you can work, when you can work, and be disciplined. And again, we can, we can help you there. We'll, I'll show you how to create a study planner using our cognition platform. All right? Um, maximizing the time available. So whether that's an hour or two stuck on a train or an aeroplane, or whether it's just 10 minutes in the day, uh, we'll talk about how you can absolutely use all that time, which may have been otherwise dead time. Yeah? We mentioned about how we'll help you identify your weaker areas to target. Um, and lastly, but by no means least, um, I'd like to talk about my team. We have a fantastically experienced uh, group, a global group of CFA instructors um, with years and years of experience. Uh, and, and all of that experience really goes into the product. So hopefully you'll, you'll uh, get the benefits of that as we go through. And again, I'll have a chat about uh, my faculty colleagues in a second. So, um, you know, we have uh, a, lot of, a lot of experience, so please have confidence that that uh, we, we do know what we're talking about. We, uh, we train thousands of people globally a year, um, and we've been doing it for a number of years. Uh, we've got a lot of experience. Um, so in London alone, there are oh, probably a, a combined, I'd say a, a good hundred years worth of CFA teaching experience. And that's just, just in London. We have offices all over the world. So we have lots and lots, decades worth of teaching experience. Uh, CFA teaching experience. Now, why is that important? Well, I can tell you why. Because every year, the curriculum changes a bit. So some things come in, some things go out. You know, some things get revised, get changed a bit, may get updated. But there's other areas that never change. Now, uh, maybe if you use a prep provider that hasn't been doing this for so long, they won't really pick up that trend. We've been doing this for a year. I've been doing this for 20 years myself. And so over those 20 years, I've got a really good idea about what areas simply don't change. And there's a reason they don't change, and that's because the examiner says they're absolutely core areas. And that means that we can give you the benefit of that, of that experience to say, okay, well, over the last 20 years, this area hasn't changed. That, therefore, has to be a really important area that the examiner is saying that's non-negotiable, everyone has to learn. So this experience is, is really useful and we can help you there. Uh, we can help you in terms of how you write the questions. So though we do cover the whole curriculum, we clearly are going to cover more those areas which simply are vital, which don't change. So the experience I think you will get the benefit from, uh, from all of the, uh, us old, old guys who have been doing it for a very long time. Okay. So here's a kind of an outline uh, and we're going to take you through this in our cognition platform. Uh, this is the, the uh, sections of the platform and hopefully we can get you to the, uh, the end result. So if we start with the uh, schedule part, again it's a, just a screen grab. Um, you may not uh, be able to see all the detail but I can give you a few um, hi uh, high level uh, key features. So this shows a, I guess, like a diary plan. Um, and it will get, tell you what you should be doing. It'll be color-coded, so different topics will have different uh, colors. This is obviously set up for May, uh, so I, I guess it's going to be just you know, review work, you know, practice, mock exams, that kind of stuff. Now, this uh, calendar uh, is tailored to you. So you can change the dates, so up here, you can enter your start date. Uh, okay, the, the end date will be fixed. That will be the CFA exam date. Uh, but you can enter your start date. And based on when you put your start date, it will then calibrate a, a realistic study plan. And again, it's where the experience of 
of my team can come in, we've got a pretty good idea of what's achievable uh, in the time available. And we also have a good idea about what the average candidate does in terms of how long it takes them to cover a topic. So this should hopefully give you a personalized uh, planner which keeps you on track. And that's the key, keep that momentum going. You know, if you get stuck, just move on. You've got to keep moving on and not get uh, stuck in one area. So the planner is, is very, very useful. You can actually have it in list form, but most people prefer, prefer in a diary form. Also at the very top, we have a, um, a very sort of nice banner at the top here, which again, just as a visual glance, it gives you a, a snapshot of what you're doing. So on the far right, number of days until the exam. Looks quite nice now, 249, but it will start falling. Um, we also have there the, uh, the number of uh, readings that you've yet to look at, the uh, number of knowledge checks, which I'll talk about in a second, which you uh, have or haven't done. So there's a little, little bit of information on there, but the study plan is pretty, pretty crucial in terms of getting the right structure in place. Okay? Then we move on to, I guess, the really clever bit, the learning part. There's a lot of really clever software behind it. So it's basically an adaptive learning algorithm that will create a profile of you, it will benchmark you against your peer group, and based on that, it will work out whether you are relatively uh, strong, average, or weak on certain areas. And it will tailor the questions based on that profile. So if I talk through how the learning uh, works, it starts off with a very uh, first level, where you have the topics, so ethics, FRA, quants, econ, etc. If you click on a topic, uh, it'll show you to the right a topic tree. And you can see just on the very uh, far edge of that, these little boxes, everything is color coded. So at a visual glance, you can see how you're doing. And um, each box basically relates to a section of the learning. Green is good, you want green. Um, orange means you are kind of improving in that area. Um, you know, red generally is not so good. But there's a little visual kind of graphic here. If I then click on the topic tree, we then go into uh, further detail. So what we have on the, uh, the first column is we have the uh, study sessions, right? using the same notation as a CF Institute. Then we have the readings, using exactly the same numbering and notation of the CF Institute. But then what we then do is break the readings down. We break them down into concepts. So one concept could be um, present value of a single cash flow. It could be a concept. And then within each concept, we then break it down further into what we call atoms. So we try and work out the, the key elements, if like the DNA of a concept. So for you to be able to do a present value of a single cash flow, what do you have to know? We have to know about discounting. You have to know about interest rates. Are they a compound rate or a nominal rate? You, know, you have to be able to adjust for like non-annual time periods. There's quite a few elements you have to master to hit a concept. So these are what we call atoms. And the atoms are mostly covered with very, very small bite size videos. So that way, if people say, I haven't got time to study, I generally say, well, you must have two minutes because that's how long most of these atoms are, just two minutes. So it doesn't really matter how little time you have, you could go online and watch a very small, very focused video. And then what then we normally have is after a video, there's a few questions, two or three questions that are very focused to try and reinforce the knowledge of that video. So the atoms really help you learn in small steps. In a way, it's like how we teach kids. You, know, you don't teach kids by giving a whole long instruction. You do one step at a time. And even though we are all grown up, trust me, we still learn very similar ways. Uh, in fact, children are probably better at learning than most adults, and I think we've kind of forgotten that uh, as we've got older. So we've gone back to real, real basic, the sort of the, the heart of, of learning. So atomization, very, very small nuggets of information. So the idea is you go through these atoms, and I should say, by the way, if you don't like this approach, that's fine. Uh, we do have a section on the portal called the library section, where you can simply find all the videos, and you can download them and watch them in their entirety. So if you are, uh, old school like that, you can do that. But I recommend the, the ATOM approach. Uh, all educational studies show it improves learning by breaking things down. 
So, okay, you look through these atoms, you'll do these questions, and after you've gone through uh, two, three, four concepts, all right, what we're then going to do is give you a little mini assessment. I'm going to give you a knowledge check. So a knowledge check is like a, a small test. Okay. Now this is where this algorithm comes in. It's really clever. So it'll have monitored what you've done so far. It would have been you know, looking at those atoms, at the questions you've answered after each atom, and it would already start to build a picture of what you have done. And it will benchmark that with what everyone else has done. You know, so have you got a question wrong where everyone else got it right, or whatever. So it builds up a profile. So when you go into a knowledge check, it will then start off by giving you a selection of questions on those concepts. But it will rapidly change based on your prior performance and based on your performance of that knowledge check. So if you get a question wrong on a particular area, so perhaps you know, they ask you to do a present value using continuous compounding and you get that question wrong. It will immediately say, uh oh, there's an error. Let's try another question. And it'll bring in another question that's very similar. And it'll keep doing that until you've demonstrated the algorithm that you can use continuous compounding. So what you'll find is that no two candidates will have the same experience here. Um, you could be doing a knowledge check next to someone, and you could be, both be doing very, very different questions and different number of questions. So the strongest candidates that get everything right, you may only end up doing a dozen questions before the algorithm says, you know what, you've got it nailed. The, the less strong candidate might do 15 questions, maybe 20, maybe 30. So it really will adapt uh, based on your progress. So unbelievably clever uh, bit of kit. So you, you do the concepts um, after the atoms, try a knowledge check. Then, and obviously, by the way, for a big reading, there could be more than one knowledge check. You know, they, yeah, but, but once you've done those, we then have our study session tests, which obviously cover uh, um, the whole of that area. I say the whole of the area, it's still designed to be a fairly bite-sized process, so relatively small test, 20 questions typically, so 30 minutes of your life, so it shouldn't be an excuse you haven't got time, right? but it would be a, a, a sample across the study session. So it's a really, really clever um, uh, structure we have here. In this learn part, there are approximately three and a half thousand questions. Now, not all of you will do those questions. Uh, it depends on your progress. I said, you know, the, 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 the better you are, the fewer questions you'll need to do, because it'll work out that you are better in certain areas, and it simply won't waste your time. And it goes back to the point I made earlier, that we don't want to do comfort revision. There's no point doing 100 questions on a topic and you got get 100 questions right. You know, you're, you're probably wasting your time. You could have realized that you, you know that topic by doing 20 questions, then using that time elsewhere. And that's really what this software is doing. It's got these thousands of questions, but if it's doing its job properly, you won't do those thousands of questions. Right? I'll show you, talk in a moment how you can do them if you want to, but, but you, you may not need to. Right? So there's our learning um, part. The progress part is gives you a, a kind of a high level look down on your performance to date. Right? So it gives you little, uh, like little badges, little gold coins. So each knowledge check is a circle. And if you've done it and you've passed, it goes gold. It goes kind of a gold color. So you, you want it to be gold. Right? So, and it's color coded. Um, so here we have uh, ethics, where we've got a little, little, little badge to say we've completely finished um, ethic, ethics and professional standards. We've done everything. We've done all the questions, all the knowledge checks, perfect. Then we have a, uh, uh, a next section, it's fixed income, um, which is showing that we've only done uh, a couple of those knowledge checks, so the rest of the circles are not in yellow. Uh, and we have financial reporting next, uh, which again, you can see we've missed uh, one of the knowledge checks. And also, it's um, an orange color, which kind of is telling us there's a color code in here that says we're, we're a little bit behind schedule in terms of our performance. But that's a really good visual graphic of seeing, are you on track? You know, what have you done so far? What do you have to do? And remember, that top banner stays there. So you can always link back at any time and just see, OK, here's another day nearer, or another, another knowledge check done. But a progress one is a really, really key area to monitor your performance. 
So, so this part of the website you'll be doing for the first part of your preparation. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking probably three months in you know, of preparation. The last month, six weeks, seven weeks, whatever, is when you do the review part. Uh, now here we have, uh, this is my favorite part. I wish I had this when I was doing CFA. Uh, what you can go into the review part is first of all review your study session tests. Right? So here we've got a, a screen grab of some poor chap who hasn't done particularly well on quants. So you can see 35%, 30 and 45. So pretty, pretty poor. And then on the left of that, we have kind of a breakdown. And it breaks it down. So it tells you the readings which this study session test we're covering. And it's color coded. So red is really rubbish. Uh, green is fantastic. Uh, orange is you're getting better, but still a little bit rubbish. Uh, and so it gives you kind of a, a visual graphic of what you're doing. So just imagine I'm this person here. It wasn't me, by the way, but just imagine it was. And I'm thinking, right, I need to review quants. Well, you've got a number of choices. What you could do is just say, I want a brand new test. All right? Now, obviously, in this case, given that this person is pretty hopeless at everything, a new test and everything probably is the right thing to do. But let's imagine instead that only one of those readings was red, the rest were green. Then clearly, I need to just work on one of those areas. So what I could do is just click on one of those areas here. And that brings up a really cool question generator tool. Uh, so you can click on there, and it comes up and says, look, do you want some new questions? You say, yeah. And I say, well, what kind of questions do you want? And it gives you a fantastic choice. It, they can say, do you want just random questions on this area? Or do you want us to only pick questions you haven't seen before? Maybe. Or do you want to only have questions that you have seen before but got wrong before? So there's lots of different levels you can access, but that's a fantastic. I'd love to have had that as a candidate to be able to identify my weak areas and just have focused questions uh, on those weak areas. I mean, brilliant. I, um, I'm so envious that you have it and I didn't. But anyway, it's a fantastic uh, tool there in the review section. Right? Um, the review section has lots of other um, areas to help you. So it has uh, videos uh, that range from what's it like on the big day, so what to expect for the, on the exam day, uh, videos on exam technique. Uh, we have summary videos on just kind of a, a quick recap on uh, uh, LIFO FIFO or a quick recap on monetary policy. So again, not aimed at detail, just aimed at jogging your memory. Uh, there's mind maps in there. Uh, there's a, a document we call the final countdown, which is like a, a glorified formula sheet, which has every key formula you need and a little bit of narrative around the edges. So it's a really useful final stage uh, booklet. We have the mock exams, five mock exams you can do. We have workshops, you know, there's 10 of them there, which again have more questions and then a video debrief. So we mentioned there's about three and a half thousand questions in the learning part. Well, I haven't added up how many are here, but there's, there's probably at least another couple of thousand. So there's a, a lot of questions you're going to have to play with. Right? So this review part is, is a very Im important, again, part. But you'll be coming to this towards the end of your, your studies. So most people start doing the review part, say, about six weeks before the exam, give or take. I mean, some a bit later, some a bit earlier. Um, but it's, it's a lot of tools, particularly that question uh, generator tool, you know, fant fantastic tool. Now, in terms of um, study options, uh, for those who want a classroom, our classrooms uh, courses are designed to uh, complement uh, the cognition platform. Uh, and we have a combination of, 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 of classes, so you can do daytime, evening, weekend. Uh, the exact uh, um, timings, etc., may vary. Uh, based on uh, geographic region, but you know, generally speaking, you'll find these options. We do intensive programs, which, as the name suggests, are very, very intense. They assume you've done quite a bit of work beforehand, and then it's a really kind of fast, exam-focused look at the key areas. Um, we do a review two-day course that's just question and answer, question and answer, question and answer, question and answer, and again, you have the option, obviously, to talk in person with two one of our instructors. Um, we also, by the way, I haven't mentioned it so far, but on the online platform, 
uh, we do live stream um, a class. Okay, so um, some people love that. In that, uh, if you if you're working on your own, you know, as an on online delegate, it's nice to feel that you're part of a group. It's nice to have the discipline of knowing. Oh, look, it's six o'clock. I better log in as a class starting. And you can you can then watch a, a live streamed class. Um, if the time zones don't work for you, then we'll obviously put the recording on the portal. It normally takes a few days for it to be edited and you know take out the few coughs and splutters and pauses. You know when the, the instructor says let's do an example and waits for you to do it for five minutes. So a bit of editing, um, but it will go on the portal pretty soon. Right. So really really quite uh, popular very popular feature, uh, the live webcasts. Okay. What else do you have? You have an online uh, portal we mentioned and a mobile app. Again, I, I wish I had that in my day. So it's um, iOS, so Apple and Android compatible. And so all those videos uh, you can just download onto a tablet and watch offline. You can do the questions offline. So yeah, as I said, if you're on an aeroplane, you can still do some really good quality studying uh, on your CFA uh, product. And although you're doing it offline, the moment you get enter into a Wi-Fi area, it will sync to your portal and it will update all your data. So when you go in the following day, all your performance metrics will then be updated. If you did a knowledge check on a plane, it'll know about it. Uh, so that mobile app uh, 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 is very, very useful. Very useful. And I mentioned uh, our fabulous global uh, uh, instructor team, uh, very experienced uh, um, set of instructors. So again, in the portal, you have access to asking us questions. Uh, you can't miss it. There's a great big tab that says Ask. So you can click on there, and it'll ask you, well, what do you want to ask about? Do you want to ask a technical query? And so it'll come to me and my colleagues. Is it an IT query, something about maybe some firewall causing problems? That would go to our IT department, whatever. But you have this uh, access to our, our features here. Well, hopefully I haven't put you off. Um, if I have, well, I've probably done you and me a service because um, I, I, I don't want you to half commit. I, you know, I said it doesn't work very well. It's not the kind of relationship that, that I want uh, to have with, with, uh, with my customers. Yeah? I want you to embrace CFA. I want you to be proud of doing CFA, um, and I want you to fully commit to CFA. And, and if that's the issue, if you're saying, right, I want to do CFA, then I don't think the, the next step is, is that tricky. You know, this cognition platform that we can offer you is, is just head and shoulders above anything else you're going to find. It's such a sophisticated platform so that it will minimize the time you need by identifying your strong areas and stopping you over doing those identify your weak areas, direct you there. It's a fantastic uh, platform. So if I haven't put you off, great. Hopefully you will then uh, book on. And yeah, hopefully we will have a, a good long relationship and get you through level one, level two, level three. As I said before, if, if you commit to CFA, we absolutely uh, will commit to you. Right? And I, I love it. I love nothing better than looking in, in the financial press, uh, usually around uh, autumn time, uh, when the CF Institute normally publish the list of newly minted charter holders. And I love going through that list and, and seeing delegates that I've worked with over three years. And that's what I want to do. I want to get you through this over the next three years or four years, whatever. Um, I really don't want you doing this half-hearted. So please ask that question at the beginning. When are you going to find that time? You know, Aim for about 300 hours. Some of you may do less, some may be more. But I think if you think 250 to 300, that's a pretty good uh, range to think about. And then have a plan of action. And it, if you can do that, I'm pretty confident we can then do the rest to get you through. Right? In fact, I'm so confident that we have a, a no pass, no pay policy. Again, details you can find on our website. But it pretty much does what it says on the tin, that if you don't pass, having followed our recommendations, then you won't have to pay. Um, you'll also see here some information about uh, uh, local discounts. Um, so yeah, please uh, uh, have a look at that and, and ask uh, your, your office for those details. Um, and, and also, by the way, there are discounts available if any of you are 
um, have already tried CFA, maybe on your own or maybe with another PrEP provider, um, and you want some help from us, that's fine. We can talk to you, and again, we can give you a, a pretty uh, decent discount if you already tried CFA before. So you'll find details on the last slide of our uh, people to contact. Uh, so uh, these are our Europe and America's uh, details. Um, obviously, if you go onto our website, if you want to find details of our other offices, you'll find it there as well. So hopefully this has uh, been useful. Um, hopefully I haven't put you off, but if I have, then we've probably done ourselves, uh, done yourself a favour. And so hopefully you will uh, commit to CFA, and I will see you, uh, whether it's in person or whether it's uh, uh, just via the videos, um, over the next few years. Uh, there's a few questions that have come in. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to have a quick look through there and see if I can answer any of those. Um, so let me just have a, a look at these. Um, there's a question here about should I do uh, ACCA, it's an accounting qualification, or uh, before CFA or go straight into CFA. Really good, really good question. Um, uh, uh, accounting qualifications like uh, ACA um, uh, or the equivalent uh, elsewhere is, is a fantastic qualification. Um, it will absolutely help you if you want to do that before CFA. But that said, the focus for CFA is slightly different to uh, uh, professional accountancy qualifications. Our focus is more on analysing accounts rather than constructing them. And actually the focus as you go through CFA is more about ripping up accounts, adjusting accounts. Uh, so it will help, but I, I wouldn't say it's absolutely essential. Um, uh, question about uh, crash courses and revision classes. Um, absolutely, I think we mentioned that, the intensive uh, classes and revision classes. Again, details you'll find there. Um, uh, da -da -da, a question here about um, uh, the maths content looks like of CFA. Okay, that's a question we get asked quite a bit, actually. Um, CFA at all three levels includes lots of uh, numerical concepts, right? but it doesn't actually include lots of numerical questions. Right? So um, across the whole of your exam, I would say probably a quarter of the questions will involve you picking up your calculator, doing a calculation. So you could be a pretty rubbish mathematician and, and, and still pass CFA. This, this counts for all three levels. That said, however, to understand some of the concepts, you, you, it does help to have a, a, a numerical background. So there is a little bit of uh, maths there. It's mostly fairly kind of high school level maths. So, you know, simply rearranging equations, solving for an unknown. Nothing advanced, no simultaneous equations, just, you know, very straightforward uh, type of questions there. Um, and most of the heavy lifting is done with your calculator, which we will show you. Uh, there are full uh, video guides on the platform, and uh, if not, you can ask us. So your calculator will do most of the work. So I think if, if maths is your problem or worry, it, it probably uh, it is not an insurmountable problem. I think we can, we can deal with that, okay? So I'm going to look to see if there's any um, other questions we have here. Um, question about 300 hours per level. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much an average. Um, say, that's what I found. I did, did about 200 for level one. I did way over 350, 380 probably for level two, and I probably did about 250 for level three. So I was pretty close to that as an average for all three levels, okay. Um, what else do we have it looking through here? Uh, uh, question about the intense course. Um, it's only spread over a handful of days. Yep, that's, that's kind of deliberate. And we also schedule the intense courses fairly close to the exam. The idea is that you do a lot of the work beforehand and then we can very quickly go through the content um, and really try and give you that exam focus. Um, it is going to be an intensive time, it will be a, a tiring course and the more you can do beforehand the better uh, in terms of the coverage. But I guess it is what it, it says on a tin, it's a five day intensive uh, course there. Um, see if there's anything else on there. Okay, apologies if I missed anyone else's questions. Feel free to uh, contact us. Say, my name is Simon Hollihan. Uh, you can either send a request through the contact here. You can ask them to direct it to me or, or to any one of my team. We're more than happy to talk to you or email you if you have any other questions. So thank you for listening and goodbye.